You know it. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says, Mary's born child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Shepherds watched their flocks by night. They saw a bright new shining star. And then they heard a choir sing. The music seemed to come from afar. Hark now, hear the angels sing. A new king born today. And we shall. Now Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem that night to find no place to pour a child, not a single room was inside. now hear the angels sing, a new king born today, and we shall Christmas Day, trumpet sound, trumpet sound, and angels sing, listen to what they say, and we shall live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Then by and by in Bethlehem, in a stable of forlorn. Mary's little boy was born. Sing hack now. Hack now, hear the angels sing. New king born today. And we shall live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Trumpet sound, trumpet sound, and angels sing. for everyone but just give it a go but such an important song that we're going to sing because it goes all the way back to Isaiah 9 6 to 7 and it says this for unto us a child is born to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this Amen
let us adore him. You may be seated. Let me just pray a prayer over the service tonight. Father, I just pray that as we gather together, as we lift your name high, Father, may it just be a beautiful connection with friends, with new friends, Father God, around your word, around baby Jesus. Holy Spirit be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, beautiful team, for leading us so well. Well, welcome to Christmas Eve service. So glad that you could join us um, today. Tomorrow is Christmas Day, and I know many of you are going to celebrate it with your families, with friends, and so it's so special to have this wee time together um, um, as as a church family, as a community, um, to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with one another today. I'm very, very mindful that um, for some people... um, Tomorrow and today is going to be uh, a a time where we are going to miss those who are not with us anymore. Um, My mom passed away 22 years ago, but every Christmas you remember that. For some people here, um, I know somebody here who lost a sister only just a few days ago. And so the pain is is still um, really hard, whether it's so many years ago or whether it's so recent. So just to not forget them, I just, um, in recognition of all those who can't be here today because they've gone before us, I just want to um, light a candle. They are not forgotten. They're in our hearts, and they're here with us today in this service. Is that all right? Look, um, we love um, to bring the message of Christmas in so many different ways and forms. In a minute, we're going to watch a play um, that two um, young people have put together here. Um, But before we do that, we have the choir has prepared some songs for us. So if I could have the choir up, and we're going to bless you with another song about Christmas. Hello. <laughs> A long time ago in a Bethlehem town The Lord from heaven to earth came down King of kings was born in a manger. Now we can sing what the angels sang. They said. Our God is with us. The chains of sin and death are gone now. Oh, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Glory, glory in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Glory, glory in the highest, peace on earth, peace on earth. Give a rapid heart of madness, fill us with the light. 
in the highest. Peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth, good will for men. Peace on earth, peace on earth, good will for men. along but you don't have to stand just stay and you could sing along or enjoy and you know it silent night Spirit of Christmas. Don't you dare walk out. <laughs> you were good. Come on.
to accept him. The peace of content, peace with God, peace onto you. Of hope, what hope is there? I don't think people would ever change. I don't think Christmas would get any better. In fact, I just see it getting more and more hectic. Soon we won't even know what Christmas is about. I just don't see much hope for this old world. There is hope because Jesus came to bring you new hope. A hope of a lifetime that is better than this. Hope is found through faith in God's wisdom and love. Jesus is the hope of the world. Keep your hope alive. I am the angel of love. The spirit of Christmas is God's love sent down to us to his son. God's love to you. Boy, joy, peace and hope and love, that's the true spirit of Christmas. The food, gifts, tree and decorations are just things for us to enjoy. They aren't the real meaning of Christmas. I've been trying to create the spirit of Christmas with outward things. I can't create it. It was created when God gave the gift of his son to the world. I just need to celebrate it. Christmas is intended to be a celebration, not a contest. A celebration of the birth of Christ and all that it brings to us. These things can wait. I think I'll go over to the nursing home. Now I have the spirit of Christmas. Joy to the world. Well done, Manessa and Micah. Thank you for putting that together for us. And what a great um, uh, thought for us to think about the true meaning of Christmas. Now I'm going to do something that I probably i am looking at how many people here are here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share a, a, just a short devotion. But be usually before I do that, I get the people all to high five high five about 20 people what we're doing we're high-fiving five people so introduce yourself high five to five people this is just to get off your seat and to say hello to somebody All right, I just want to bring you a short devotion, and then we're going to have the choir sing a couple of more songs. It's such a privilege to bring a devotion here on Christmas Eve. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, during the reign of King Herod, there were wise men. The wise men were wealthy, highly educated, Gentile, magi. And it says in the Bible this, when they, the wise men, saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Over the last two Sundays, we've been talking about these gifts. And we're talking about that each gift, um, it was really valuable and practical, but it also had a meaning. And so each gift had a meaning, um, giving a prophetic insight of what this Jesus, this baby Jesus was going to be. So we looked at frankincense, which was Jesus' as high priest. We look at myrrh, which was Jesus as the suffering servant. But today, we're going to let have a look at the gift 
gold. Now, throughout history, because of the scarcity and the value of gold, this has been known as a gift fit for a king. And today I want to talk to you about the kingship of Jesus. But before we do that, let's play a little game, hey? We're going to play a game, name that king. I have chocolate that I could throw at somebody. I have got lollies. Um, I've also got an iPhone that I'm not going to throw at anyone. (laughs) Or this for... Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shout something out to you, which is a clue, and you're going to name that king. And whoever shouts it first, I'm going to throw a chocolate. Are you ready? Gorilla. Oh, you guys were all too spiritual. Get it? Simba. Fast food. It was over there. It's all there. This is a good... That was Abe. Actually, Abe, give that one back. I've got a kiss for you. Because I've got chocolate kisses, but I'm not sure if everybody wants a kiss. So there you are. Um, blah, blah, blah. Who else have I got? Horror books. Blues. Oh, who said Elphas is king? I like that one. There's a kiss for you. All right, um, what, else, what else have I got here? Oh, this is maybe, do I have jazz lovers here? Jazz. Um, um, an American guy who does interviews. There was three kisses that way. I want to do something here, for goodness sake. Um, Okay, these guys are not allowed to answer. This one is so easy, all right? It's about Britain, Great Britain. It's, it's a, who did you say? <laughs> Charles, did you say Charles? There you go. King Charles. All right, that'll do for naming the king. But the king, of course, I want to talk about is King Jesus. Jesus is king like no other. And it says this in 1 Timothy, Timothy, For at just the right time, Christ will be revealed from heaven by the blessed and only a mighty God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You see, the King of kings is supreme authority over all the kingdoms of this world. And um, actually, the entire cosmos is in the hand of King Jesus. He's a king like no other. But listen here in this Christmas story. You would expect a king to be born in luxury, in comfort. You would expect Jesus, if he was born today as, as, as a royal prince, that he would probably be in a crib with purple lining, that he would have a Gucci onesie, that he would have a silver potty. No one expected the king of kings to be born in poverty in a cave with farm animals. Didn't expect the savior, messiah, king to come out of Nazareth. Nazareth is like a tarot, like Nazareth. What good can come out of Nazareth? He was the son of a carpenter. No one predicted that the son of God, the king of glory, would want to befriend prostitutes, to touch lepers, to love those that life rejected. Nobody would ever imagine that he chose uneducated fishermen, that he chose despised tax collectors, rebellious, troublemaking disciples, that he would forgive a woman caught in adultery, that he would show grace to a woman on the street. At the same time, he would confront the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. He would overturn tables, misusing the temple prophet. Never! Would you imagine that this king of the Jews would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey? 
And all those cheering on the arrival would have been outcast, rejected. No one would ever expect that the king would stand trial for crimes he did not commit. The innocent king, beaten, bruised, whipped, stripped naked, hanging on a cross like a slave. And yet he would pray to his father and he would say, forgive them. They're not, they don't know what they're doing. And he would say, into your hands I commit. Nobody would expect that this ruling, reigning king would come to die, that the earth would shake, the sky would grow dark, the world lose hope. No one ever would have believed it that this royal king would be buried into a borrowed cave. And three days later, when some women came to check, the stone would be rolled away, the tomb is empty, Jesus is risen, the king is alive, and he sits on the throne. This Christmas message is about the unusual way for God to show his love to a broken and a sinful world. What is interesting is this happened 2,000 or so years ago in the first century. And you see three different responses to this king of kings, this Jesus is king. And oddly enough, 2,000 years later, I think too in our world, we see three different responses to the king and his message. And I, and, I, and I wonder, would be honest and courageous enough today to think, who am I in this story? Would you be courageous enough to think, who am I? What is my response to Jesus as king? So number one, there was Herod. Now Herod opposed Jesus as king. He opposed him. And he would execute all the boys under the age of two because he didn't want this king to be alive. So they, it was a mass killing of all the boys under the age of two. And I wonder, I wonder in this world if there's people that would say, I oppose this thing. I oppose this religion. I oppose church. I'm fine on my own. Nobody's telling me what to do. This book, this Bible, it's, it's old-fashioned, it's not relevant. Is it even true? There is opposition to Jesus as king. Or secondly, there were Jewish priests. They dismissed him as king. They even quoted scripture. They knew what was happening. It was happening five miles away from them. They chose not to go down and see him. They chose to dismiss him. They didn't go to worship. I wonder how many of us are, are dismissing Jesus as king. Is Christmas all about gifts? Going to grandma's house for food, food and more food. Santa. Going through life, dismissing Jesus as king. And then there was the wise man who bowed down to Jesus as king. The highest form of worship, bow down. The ultimate posture, surrender, submission, Reverence, what about you? What's your response? Is your response to this message as baby Jesus, is it opposition? Is it dismiss dismissal? Or is it bow down and worship? In my life, I'm not sure if I've opposed him. I've come from a Christian background, but I can tell you, I certainly dismissed him. I have done years with dismissing him. Like, 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 Jesus was just somebody that you, you know, you would go to in your hour of need and then do your own thing. And also wonder, like, that is for later. But somehow there was such a drawing in me that I spent years of finding what is it, that, that thing inside that just wants to find out more. What is it? And just like the wise man who spent um, because actually the wise men weren't there at the birth of Jesus. They probably took a year and a half finding him. By that time, Jesus was a toddler. And so on that same way, it took me years. But then at some stage, there was a finding for myself that this baby Jesus is my king. I saw him on the cross dying for my sin. And I saw when you didn't know him. I was so in you to know that king. He's not distant. He's not an uninvolving, angry judge. Do, 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 do. He's not the big guy in the sky. He's not the man upstairs. He's Jesus. He is Jesus, the king of glory. 
the king of righteousness, the king of ages. Jesus is the king. He heals the sick. He opened blind eyes. He heals the, the, he heals the deaf ears. He strengthened the weak. He delivers the captive. He restores the broken. He is a shelter in time of trouble, a light when the world is dark, the prince of peace, lamb of God, resurrection and life, goodness indescribable, power incomprehensible, grace irresistible. And at this name, darkness trembles. In his presence, demons flee. Though the devil hated him, he couldn't stop him. Death couldn't defeat him. Grave couldn't hold him. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the King of King. And I pray with all my heart that you will want to know him like I know him. Don't let this Christmas be one that passes you by again. Don't oppose him. Don't ignore him. Submit, surrender, bow down, and worship him. Could I have the choir up and the piano band?
to pray a blessing and pray. And I just want to highlight the words, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. And these words, I believe, are an invitation to say, let us come and adore him. And so this evening, um, Father God, we come before your throne of grace and we give thanks. We give thanks that um, you chose to come onto this earth and become flesh and be born in such humble um, setting, in such a humble setting, Father God, so we all can relate to you. And so we come with humble hearts and we open ourselves and we receive you. And this evening, Father God, there are some who are still on, that path, on the path, Father God, of finding out who is Christ the King. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you reveal yourself, you illuminate who Jesus is as King in our lives, that we can come and sing from the depth of our heart that we adore you. We adore you, Holy God, we adore you. Thank you for the gift that you gave to this earth. And so, Father God, this evening, as we are celebrating Christmas, we are mindful that um, this is the first Christmas for some without their loved ones. And so we stand with them and we, we pray, Father God, the Prince of Peace to come and abide. And so, Father, we pray your peace in homes. Father, as we are celebrating the festivities, we pray for um, connections, heart connections. Father God, for families, when they unite, that your blessing, Father God, is upon them. We pray your special blessing over our community, Lord. We pray, Father, that your peace, the Prince of Peace, will just so abide over this community and that we are so blessed. And so we thank you. And Father God, as we uh, continue to minister, as we continue to um, worship you, King of Kings, I pray, Lord, that you be with us. I pray, Father, that as the holy days are upon us, that, Father God, you protect us. I pray, Father God, that um, we protect us, Father God, from sickness. Protect, Father God, uh, those who are traveling from accidents. And I pray, Father God, that, um, that we will just continue to humbly seek you, to come at your feet and surrender our lives. And as we have heard, you are the king of kings, and we give you permission. You are so welcome in our lives. We thank you, and uh, Father God, our Emmanuel, abide with us, abide with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just as the choir is still standing, we have one more song that we'd like to sing um, for you. And it's a song that we've been practicing, and we're probably not really there yet, but um, the heart is there. And we so wanted to share the words of this song because um, Jesus being king is so important to us. He is our guide, our light, our father, our strength, our song. And as you journey with him, let him become your everything, your all in all. And may the words from our heart as we sing this resonate with your spirit. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? 
or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. The enemy's been defeated and death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated and death couldn't hold you down. We're going to lift our voice in victory. We're going to make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. And death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. We lift your name up. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We lift your name up. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day than thousands elsewhere, thousands elsewhere. be your anchor, be your light, be your hope and blessings um, over this period and over tomorrow and all the days after. What we're going to do is there's just a, a, a song that we're going to just play up uh, at the background. So just um, as you go out, have a listen to it. We also have some, what do we have? Fruitman's pies. pies to eat. So be blessed and we'll see you again in the new year. <laughs>